Hello, Scoob Believer. I welcome to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, Scoob. <laughs> Coming at you, whatever device you happen to be listening on. All right, before we get into anything here, I just want to make a quick kind of announcement, kind of important thing. Um, the topic we're going to talk about might have a teeny tiny bit of controversy, but I think it's super important that we talk about it. It's something that's happening in society today, so I want to make sure that you, you kind of have that kind of trigger warning kind of thing, but at the same time, it's really super important that we talk about this. So when you get into the interview, you'll understand. Thank you so much for hanging out and listening to it because it's really important to me. Also, I go over a few kind of personal things in this story, but once again, it's kind of the same idea where I think it's really important that we get this information out there. All right, so the Scuba Believer of the Week this week is Mar from Pods Like Us. Thank you, Mar, for being a Scuba Believer. Uh, you might have heard him in my last episode where he kind of introduced himself and the, his my podcast. Marv, you're amazing. Thank you so much. I just want to kind of give you a, a, a shout out for being one of the biggest scuba believers I've ever come across. So thank you, Marv, for being a scuba believer. You're awesome. All right. So today we're talking to Veronica. Veronica is actually an indie author. She's written her own book and she's putting her own information out there all by herself. A lot of hard work has gone into this. So I want you to kind of take a little good listen to how she's gone through things and uh, the stories that she has for herself and why she actually wrote this book. So today we are talking to Veronica. Salutations, Scuba Believers, and we are here again with another amazing brand spanking new entrepreneur. Today we're here with Veronica. Hi, Veronica. How are you? I'm good, Jesse. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to see us on the undiscovered entrepreneur or listen or hear us on the undiscovered entrepreneur i really appreciate you i really appreciate you for having me thank you all right you're very welcome okay so i'm going to ask you right off the bat i'm going to ask you one kind of semi-serious question okay you ready yes i am okay are you a school believer of course i'm a school believer all right thank you so much for being a school believer veronica i appreciate you all right veronica so do me a favor and just tell me a little bit about who you are and what you are doing for your entrepreneur adventure and kind of how long you've actually been doing it for. Okay, so I'm an indie author. I have been an indie author since 2018. And what involves being an indie author is basically doing everything yourself with the publishing process, like finding editors, cover designers, or even cover designing the cover yourself and making sure that you're going to the right people to produce it and finding the right websites to distribute it and do all of the marketing and the promoting yourself as well. All right. So you've been an indie uh, writer for since 2018. When was your last book that you wrote? I released my last book in 2024 in January. Okay. Good. That's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> All right. Yes. So we're going to kind of concentrate and, and we're going to talk a lot, but we're going to concentrate mostly on that newest book when we're talking along here. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. So what, what actually made you start wanting to be an author? I mean, what was the catalyst that got you started? So I think the first time I ever realized I wanted to be an author was in sixth grade when I read Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan, because it was the first book I ever read that had a main character that was sort of like me and a person of color. And I realized that I wanted them to have more books like that. And I wanted to be able to write one of them. It's nice when we come across something that inspires us like that. You could put yourself in that character's shoes and say, hey, this is kind of what I'm going through. Why can't I have that same idea for other people too? Well, let's have more of what we got right here. Yes. All right. Was that your main influence? I mean, I know you've kind of been writing books for a while, but do you have yes. any other influences that you've uh, you've come across? Maya Angelou is one of the other writers that I love and that really inspired me to keep writing, especially as a woman of color. Anybody else? I also love Nicholas Sparks, who he's a romance author, and his books were very enlightening and loving to read. Okay. So, I mean, a couple of things that you've said, you've ended with a person of color. And uh, I mean, how has that impacted you? I mean, I know I understand kind of what you're saying, but can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yes. It's not a lot of people of color 
can get up there, especially when they're indie author and doing it themselves, but also that not being able to see myself in a lot of things and really fighting to see myself or to relate to other people who are in the this specifically this industry and seeing how many can actually make it. So is this is this been kind of a, a rough patch for you? I mean, has it been one of the higher, hardest pitfalls that you've come across as an indie uh, author? I think so. I do think so that just trying to fight for my spot and my right to basically be here and be an indie author and write my books and actually market my books and get to the right position is a little harder than I think if it, I was not a person of color. I understand that. I understand that. Can you give me an example maybe? So like you're an indie author, you're a person of color. If you're listening, they can't exactly see you. So <laughs> if you don't mind me asking what your, your background is there. Oh, I'm a Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. I was first in, born in California, then I came in New York. But just being Puerto Rican and having to fight for that and having to be basically people to see me and see who I am also. Okay, cool. So I just want to make sure everybody understands what <laughs> what we're talking about here. Yes. So can you, is there, was there a time where that kind of was a blockade for you in your writing? Is there a story that kind of comes to mind? I think specifically for writing, I think is the fact that there are specific contests and things for women that I don't think, honestly, I'm not sure. It's mostly outside of writing because the fact that I've per chosen to be an indie author, I okay. think that I control that myself means that I gave myself more of an opportunity as a person of color to really get out in the world. So let's, let's put the writing aside just for a second. Okay. And, and just kind of concentrate on you as a person and talk about that. Does that make it a little bit easier to think about? Yes, it does. Okay, good. So let's do that. <laughs> okay, so I guess the first time ever was, I think, in a school where one person, they wouldn't even talk to me because I was a person of color. That That was my, I think, my first experience, knowing that my life might be a little different than some people around me. It was that, it, and what you know, we talked about sixth grade and you reading, is that about that same amount of time? Yes. Yeah, what's funny is, and I'm gonna get into something a little more personal here that I've never talked about pretty much to anybody before, but since we're on the subject, I, let's see, when I was in fourth or fifth grade, I was in, I lived in this place called uh, Pittsburgh, California. And it's not a great place to be it's it's kind of a rough part of town basically yeah. and the funny thing was is the races were were actually reversed i think i was one of three male caucasians that was in the school and everybody else was predominantly african-american and it was very interesting to see the role switch that way because it put me in a different place that most people don't get to experience as and it's rough it was really, really rough. I was teased. I was picked on a lot. I I was involved in several fights. So it's it's different to to experience something like that when normally the revolt the the roles are different. But I got to experience being the minority in that school, and it's yeah. rough. And it, and it may gave me a different perspective that I don't normally get, or a mo most white males don't get to experience. Yes. So I, I, as weird as it sounds, I definitely hear where you're coming from in that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. As you're going along on your entrepreneur venture, when do you think you've made it? When do you think you've gotten to that one place where you say, this is exactly where I wanted to be. This is what I was hoping for. What does that look like to you, Veronica? I think the one place where I think I would have made it is if I meet somebody and they tell me that I have helped their life in some sort of way. I, I really believe that's when I think I will have think I've made it is when I can help somebody and help them in their life in a very prominent way, especially through my writing. Yes, yeah, especially through the writing because that's what you're trying to accomplish is kind of change, help people change people's lives through your writing. 
It's the same thing that we do through podcasting is we're hoping that we have that one person that listens and says, oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you so much. The same thing for me, too, because I'm hoping somebody comes up to me and says, hey, you're DJ Scoob, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for saying that with Veronica. It's like it's really made a big, big difference in what I, what I was feeling and hoping for in my life. So that's always the biggest thing, right? Yes, it is. All right. Good. If you were to meet somebody that that was kind of going through the same experience as you and you wanted to give them advice in indie writing, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? What steps would you have them take? I think the first step is to not be afraid and to not let fear control you and to go after what you want first. And second is get a community around you. It, like indie writing is one of, as you do it alone, but it is best to have people around you who support you and who support what you're doing and aren't going to look down on what you're doing either. So are you a part of a couple of indie writing groups? Is that what I heard you say? Yes, I am. Especially for, because I am Puerto Rican. I am part of a Latinx group on Facebook that really also helps me get out there and promote my stuff. If I, is that the name of the Facebook group? Just so I have yes. it. What was it again? Yes. Sorry. It's Latin X, I think Latin X writing group. Latin X writing group. I'm going to actually have that in the show notes in case anybody wants to check that out. And maybe if, if you're in the same situation, that would be a good place to go. A lot of people don't know where to go. So as long as we could point them in the right direction and give them some help, that'd be a good idea. Yes. All right. So if I was looking to hire or, Let's say since you're an indie writer, if I was looking to look for a book that's similar to what you're writing, but I have two more books that I'm looking at at the same time, what would set you apart from these other two books? Okay, so I think that my books really focus on the lives of the main characters and how they show from beginning to end and how their life changes and how their mind changes with them and how it really affects how they're going through it right now, but how it's going to affect them in the future as well. Cool. Is that similar to what you've experienced in your life? Yes, it is. Okay. This is one of my favorite questions, but I did kind of steal it from another podcast. So sorry, everybody. But what is the one question you wish I would have asked you, but didn't? I always have one really, my guest is always waiting for that one question to ask, and I never get that question asked. So what is that one question, Veronica? I, I think it would be, what is my favorite thing about being an indie author? Ooh, that, yeah. You, yes. That's a good one. That's a good question. So what is your favorite thing about being an indie author? My favorite thing about being an author is the community that I found while being an indie author that I do not think that I would have found if I had gone into any other career or if I had chosen not to become an indie author. Why is that? Just because most of the community are indie authors as well, but also some of them have gone through some of the same things that I've gone trying to fight for the space that we have, but also being friends as well. Having that camaraderie is really, really important. Yes, it is. Having people around you that experience the similar things that you can lean on and say, hey, and you can talk to them too because they understand. They've been there. They're in the same place that you are. And and having that person to lean on a little bit and say, hey, can you help me through this problem? Or, hey, I'm experiencing this. What do you think? That's amazing to be able to have. Yes, it is very amazing to be able to have. All right. All right, so in the next six months, I do this with all my guests. In the next six months, do you have any goals for yourself? Anything that you've set for yourself or your or your business or being an author, an indie author? Yes, I do. I In the next six months, I would like to publish my next book. And I want to set a release date for the fourth book that I would release, which is one of my poetry books. And I also want to enter a screenplay competition about some of the things I've been through as a woman. Nice. Ah, poetry. What kind of poetry is it? It is, I'm honestly not sure how to describe it, just about things that I've been through in my life. And some of them are about mental Ill illnesses and about my struggles with my anxiety and my depression. Okay. Okay. 
a lot is it a lot of rhyming or is it just like <laughs> when i think poetry i think the first thing i think about is rhyming but i know not all poetry is the same way Honestly, no, it's not rhyming. okay yeah that's i like it better that way too because it, it it's you're more easier to you know understand and tell a story than just rhyming a bunch of words together Yes. <laughs> all right so what i'd like to do with you veronica is in the next six months I'd like to have another interview with you just like this one and see if we've accomplished those things. I'm really curious to see if you get you get into the screenplay. I'm really I'm like kind of excited for you on that one. Thank you very much. And I would very much like to talk to you again in six months. All right. Fantastic. All right, Veronica, this is your time to shine. This is your time to advertise yourself. If you want to go ahead and tell us how we get a hold of you, how we get a hold of your wonderful book and those kind of things. OK, ready, set, go. All right, so I'm on veronicaeramirez.com and I can be found on Instagram at Veronica E. Ramirez Creator and on TikTok at Veronica E. Ramirez. All right, that's it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you taking the time here today to, to come and come on to my podcast here and talk a little bit about yourself and your wonderful book. I appreciate you too, especially this was my first podcast and you make me not as nervous as I was. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Veronica. All right, Scoop Believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, Scoop Believers, that was Veronica. After we actually stopped recording, I got to talk to her a little bit. I didn't realize this was her very first podcast. So I kind of was like, okay. We want to help her out a little bit because it's her first one. That way, her next one, she's a little more successful. And the next one, she's a little more successful. We want to see some great things that come from Veronica. So look out for her book. I'll put her book in the show notes. That way, you could take a look at it, possibly buy it if you'd like to. Let's help out Veronica in her entrepreneur adventure, okay? All right, a little bit more about me and what I'm doing. Uh, coming up June 2nd, I want you to be ready for this June 2nd will be my first installment of Conversations with Pi. Now, this is a new thing that I've put together where I have a conversation with the AI that's called Pi, and the whole conversation's all in AI, including my own voice, but we actually talk about different aspects of business. It's a really short 10-minute podcast, each one of them, and we're going to be putting those out every Sunday. So starting June 2nd, that's the first Sunday of June, we're going to hear these new podcasts that I've put together. I really hope you like them. Please subscribe so you can get access to these. They are actually quite informative. I really hope you enjoy them. Also, summertime is here. We're finally getting to the really busy time here in where I live in Branson. And things are getting a little chaotic. So we'll see how things go. But I'm really excited to actually have some money flowing in a little bit. But yeah, it's great. So I'm really excited for the summertime. Let's see what uh, we could do with this time coming up. Also, I don't know if you noticed or not, I do have a new format that I've put together. So now we are going back and forth from new entrepreneur to experienced entrepreneur every other week. So the first week will be a new entrepreneur. The next week would be experienced entrepreneur. The week after that would be a new entrepreneur. I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit more and have some more variety for you of different sides of the spectrum when it comes to entrepreneurship. So we have, so they're a little bit So the new entrepreneurs will be a little more frequent now, but we can all learn from everybody that we talked about. All right, school believers, thank you for another great episode, and I will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>